Blackshirt Beer Review, and welcome to the new Blackshirt Beer Review Studios. I mean, uh, we did this for you, world, so I hope you like it. We move it on up over here at Blackshirt Beer Review. I am, of course, as always, the Rhinus, and this month we've got Sean Wolfman with us. Sean, say a little bit about yourself to the world. Hello, Internet world. Um, I am a part owner for the Inkwell Tattoo. Uh, I'm here to try some delicious berry brews tonight. We'll give it a whirl. And Sean, you're, yeah, you're looking pretty, pretty thirsty, so I'm ready to roll. It. Right to it. We're going to start our offering with the shorts. Ha, uh, bike up. Oh, not that bad. Wounded in battle. Oh, I got wounded twice in battle. The Good short God. soft parade. Short soft parade is a fruit infused rye beer. And they've got, apparently got a bunch of strawberries and blueberries and raspberries and, and blackberries. Any kind of berry. And they're they're just really going for it. So let's see. It, you can tell, like right in the nose, it's just all berry. And it smells like, like a smoothie. It does. It really does. It smells like a beer smoothie. Let's My let's favorite. let's hope it doesn't uh, maintain that it's got a taste. Very berry up. color. Very uh, reddish. Purplish tint, and you know, also it's got a nice little darkness that you're going to expect out of a rye. And let's get down to it. Do it. <sighs> it's a little better than I remember, actually. I've only tried this once before, but I like this, but not to the extent that everybody might think I like it, especially with it being 8% alcohol, and we all know my love of the higher gravity beers. You tell the aftertaste a little bit, uh, when you think uh, 8%, it, it doesn't really deliver that much punch, but... At 15 IBUs, it, all the hops are just getting decimated by the berry profile, especially the strawberry. I mean, that's the biggest one that pops out at me. There's, like I said, there's blackberry, blueberry, raspberry, and strawberry, and man, they must have just really decided that strawberry was the shining star of this, because this might as well just be straight up strawberry beer in my eyes. I would suggest that you keep it ice cold, though. If it starts to get warm, it just, it's not good. On one to five on the beer scale list, even though it is a Michigan beer coming out of uh, Bel Air, Michigan, and I've got a soft spot in my heart phone. I'm only going to give this a two and a half. Mm. I, I like it, but it's nothing to write home to mama about, you know. Good, again, good berry profiles, but with everything that they threw into it, it's, it's all just strawberry in my eyes. I'm kind of let down. I would have to go with a three. I mean, I was going to grade it a little harshly, but this uh, second time trying it, I appreciate it for its... Uh, mash. Uh, I didn't realize how many different types of berries, so I guess I can appreciate that a little bit more. It, it's, it it's got a good mouthfeel and everything. Uh, the head retention leaves a little bit to be desired, but I'm sure that's got to do with the just ridiculous amount of berry uh, product it's got in it, but still, I, I want more, and I expect more from Shorts Brewery. They've, they've been a star in my eyes in the past, but this kind of falls a little short to me. Oh well. Let's see what else we got. Next, we're going to jump into the Magic Hat Elder Betty. Which, I don't really know that much about elderberries, because this is an Elder Betty Weissbier, which more or less means it's a German wheat, but as far as elderberry goes, I'm sort of at a loss. Right, well, you're, you're lucky because I did a little research and the, uh, the elderberry tree is, is very interesting, uh, very interesting story. Um, it was also called uh, Sambucus, but um, this was a sacred tree, a very spiritual tree where people would uh, go to pray or they believe that it protected against evil spirits, negativity. But also, witches would gather, covens of witches would gather underneath this tree and have rituals. And I mean, the artwork on the bottle says it all. There's something kind of witchy going on here. It's interesting. One of my favorites. 
No, uh, the artwork on this is actually great. I like the artwork on this at all. Yeah, a big, bunch. There's a big tree represented, but basically, this is the Elder Mother tree, and they said if you if you would cut one of these trees down, you would need to chant the Elder Mother over and over in order to avoid uh, some kind of spirit haunting oh, man. curses and I hope I'm not gonna be, I hope I'm not going to be cursed because I wasn't chanting it when I opened the beer. <laughs> I think you'll be alright. Well, we'll, 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 well, well, let's toast to the Elder Mother then, you know, right. let, let's cover our bases. To the but, Elder Mother! Uh, we don't need to be, uh, taking any chances here at Blackshirt. Oh, there's like... Very little nose to this at all. I'm actually kind of amazed by that. It's a very subtle, uh, berry taste. This, yeah. Subtle is the key word here. If you didn't know that this was a berry beer, you would probably miss it altogether. I mean, the mouthfeel on this is just really good. It's silky smooth and just really, really nice. But after it's in your mouth for a little bit, that berry profile actually does come up and start to pop a little bit. Absolutely. Um, It'd be easy to put down a six pack of this stuff. Oh yeah, I actually enjoy this a lot. In, you know, this being a wheat beer, it actually comes forward. It's different than what you're normally going to get from, like, you know, your malted barley and whatnot. It gives a little bit more smoothness to it, and it's just, this is great. I yeah, like 5. this a 5. lot. 5.5%, it's very good. All of the beers we're doing today are a little bit uh, on the lower IBUs, because this is 13, but whatever they're using for hops i couldn't find any exact on it but it actually comes through there is something that plays in with that berry profile and it kind of gives it a little bit more tang there's spirit spirit berries mm, the, the, the spirits in this are agreeing with me i'll tell you that much most definitely this is but, one of my favorites you know still the the nose just really blows me away because, you know, it doesn't smell of elderberries. Your father smelt of elderberries! I mean, who's ever seen an elderberry? I would like to know. I, I want to travel to find an elderberry tree and have maybe some of my own little rituals. Hmm. Keeping in mind that we are doing fruit beers this month, I'm going to give this a five. I like this. I like this a lot. Hell it's yes. what I actually want from a fruit beer. I don't want my mouth to just be overpowered by the fruit I and agree. like lose the beer aspect to it. Most this definitely. is subtle, but I still get it, and it's delightful. I agree. I'm Five. gonna drink a bunch of these. Toast to you, Magic Hat. had enough of berry for right now. Let's get into the Wells Banana Bread Beer. I'm interested about this one. I'm apprehensive. I'm not going to lie. You know, this is uh, a English strong ale from Bedford, United Kingdom. And you put Great Britain, whatever you want to call it. But it's it's daunting to say the least. Let's just hope it's not it's okay. anarchy. It's okay. Um, this is, like I said, an English strong ale brewed with fair trade bananas. And they want you to know that. As I was reading the label for this in the store, I had like every third line, I'm not kidding, is fair trade bananas. Brewed with fair trade bananas. Did we mention that it has fair trade bananas? I'm a fair trade banana. So, um, thanks Wells for using fair trade bananas? Yes. I don't know. Let's see how those fair trade bananas treat us. It's got a great head retention, which actually I expect that from the English. And it doesn't smell like banana. I thought it would. I thought it was going to be. I, I, no, I, I'm going into this with, you know, a preconception on it, but I, I like being proved wrong. Well, let's hope the taste matches the smell. Uh, sure. This is actually very tasty. <laughs> It it, it it tastes like banana bread. Tastes, tastes There's like, absolutely no qualms about that. This is banana bread. A creamy banana bread. It's the good type of banana.
banana bread, though. You know, the type that doesn't have walnuts in it. Oh. This is, it's got like just this amazingly smooth, creamy banana flavor, but with actually kind of like a backbone of raisin to it. Do you get that? I taste something besides banana. I don't know if it's raisin, but it, I, if, it's very good. If I had to make an educated guess on this, I'm betting they're using some sort of uh, special B or one of the other specialty brown malts in this to get that little bit of raisin flavor in there with it, because that really lends itself to it. Um, Mouthfeel, it is a little dry, but with something that's calling itself banana bread, you know, I'm kind of expecting it to be dry, so... I kind of wish I had a little bit of butter for it. Yeah, right? Maybe just throw a little salt on top? You know, this is good. I, I, I'm not as the hugest fan of banana bread. I like this. This is actually a very tasty, smooth banana flavor. It's not overpowering. It's not. It's not. I like it. Exactly. The big, the big word of the day for this beer is smooth. Yeah, it, it, I it's, agree. It's not very abrasive. It doesn't just jump right out at you and start knocking you to the ground with a fistful of fair trade bananas. Fair trade bananas. But it's good, you know, and at 12 IBUs, it's exactly what I was expecting with that. There is little to no hot presence in this whatsoever. If it's anything, I bet it's like East Kent Gold or something, because there's a nice earthiness to it, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I'm going to give it a three. Three? Even in it up I with think, soft parade? I, I wow. think I'm putting it right on the same bar, man. Oh, I am pleasantly surprised by this. Again, I am not a big banana bread fan. I like bananas, but banana bread... I'm giving it a four. I'm giving it a four. Wow. I, I, had, I had to think about it for a second, but it's getting a four. I would buy this again. I would suggest my friends to buy this as well. If you like banana, and if you are a fan of banana bread, go go ahead, get a bottle of How this. How was the price? I know it was like under $5. Well, that's not bad. For 5.2% alcohol, yeah, it better be under five dollars. But coming from the UK, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to find this just about anywhere. So, you know, if you're up for something different, something new, something fun, go ahead, go grab this. I definitely am pleasantly surprised by this. Thanks, Wells. Banana bonkers. I am a banana. 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 This month being the fruit beer episode, I was, you know, thinking about maybe doing Liney Kugel's Berry Vice or Wild Blue, but you know what? I know these beers suck. Sean knows these beers suck. You know these beers suck. We're going to do better for you, world. Let's do We're it. We're going to jump into the Blue Point Brewing Company Blueberry Ale. I just wonder one. what type this is. No, but it's. Oh, uh, they can't all oh, oh, oh. Well, at least I didn't take Here my go. eye out. Uh, let me, let me, let me give a little. Woo! There we go. That's more Safety like first. It. Safety first, everybody. Right, your goggles. These guys are out of Rochester, New York. New York. And apparently, can be found all over the place. I've uh, been, wow, man, I can smell this already. Oh, the blueberry aroma is just hey, like hey, floating hey, up. Just, this is pungent even as far as uh, aroma goes. Wow. And that's really good head that's retention very, for me. Very good head. Uh, as if we even have to. I want to just bury my nose in there. It's, it smells like blueberries. I fucking love blueberries. It smells like blueberries and... A little, little something extra on the backbone there. Maybe there's going to be some hops in this one. Very citrusy. At 14 IBUs, let's find out. Yeah. Yeah. There is there's some hops there. Blueberry. A little bit of lemon jumps up in there with all that blueberry. Yeah. Um, it's 
not as much blueberry as I was really expecting, especially off from pouring it. You yeah, know, the, it, the scent when, is very when overpowering. You, when you pour this, it just, just washes over you with blueberry, but not so much in the initial flavor. You know, what I would like to see is a couple of uh, fresh blueberries bouncing up and down in this cup right now. I think that would top it off very nicely. You know, just as being a uh, blueberry ale, well, I bet you that would lend itself superbly. I um, agree. It could actually have maybe just a little bit more blueberry to it. The scent definitely outweighs the flavor, I would say in this case. It's still good. There's actually, you can get the malt profile out of it. Like I said, you can get some of the hops from it. Mm -hmm. And at 14 IBUs, I was, much like our other beers tonight, I was expecting this to have the hops buried by the, the fruit in it yet again. But not so much. Out of all the ones we've drank tonight, I would think this actually has the biggest hop profile and almost, I dare say, the biggest malt profile as well. You know, there's a bit of a biscuity, bready mm -hmm. flavor going Absolutely. on with it. And I enjoy that. I like, again, I like having my beers taste like beer. <laughs> Which is why we're not doing Liney Googles or Wild Blue, because yeah. that's just fruit flavored Kool Aid we for don't need that for eighteen year old girls named one or, Brittany. One or two and you're done with that stuff. If if you even make it that far. This is a far more distinguished drink in my opinion. So four point six this is sessionable. You could drink this all night long. I was just gonna say that. Pretty this all is, right. This is a very good uh, campfire brew. You're sitting around with some friends, you know having some very tasty, delicious beverages by, you know, summertime drink. It's very good. On the beer scale, you know what? I'm going to give this one a four as well. I like it. I like it because it's a beer that actually has a subtlety to it that is fruit. And not a fruit that has a subtlety to it that is beer. Agreed. You know, I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to say... I don't know if it's because it's our last beer testing of the evening, but I'm giving it five. Oh, I, man! I think this is magnificent. I would buy it over and over again. I, Hi. I, I love blueberries. I like the taste. Only thing I would do, buy a little case of fresh blueberries and pop a couple in there and watch them dance as I drink this delicious beverage. How do you like that, world? A couple burly-ass rock and roller men just absolutely more or less giving our full seal to not one but two beers that are just fruity as all get out. Two seals. That's, that's, there's nothing foofy about it. Yeah. Hey, you know what? It, again, like I always say, if you like it, drink it. Absolutely. How about that? Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Well, now that Sean and I are all fruited up, I think that's going to do it for this month's version of Black Shirt Beer Review. Next month being July and all, we're going to jump into some barbecue action. Yeah! Bad Beer Beatdown Bonanza. Who's going to win? PBR? High Life? Strohs? Maybe Blacks? Oh man! Until then, I'm the Rhinus. I'm Sean Wolfman. Happy drinking. Cheers. Peanut butter disaster. <laughs>